Hi everyone. Let me tell you about my son. His name is Vincentas. He is four years old. He is very special because he is my firstborn. But he is like any other European kid. He likes to take his school bus, play with his toys, and drive his dad crazy once in a while. Vincentas has never used a plastic straw, and he doesn't understand why anyone would. He knows. What could happen when you throw away a plastic straw after using it only once? It goes to the trash bin, then to the landfill, it might get into a river and end up in the sea. He knows that a turtle might eat that straw. And for the turtle, that would be the end. But the life of the straw could continue for ages. Nowadays, most children know these things. They know because we taught them. We teach them things like this, like we teach them about pollution and climate change. But we do not always learn those lessons ourselves. Single-use plastic straws will not be an issue in the European Union very soon. But there are many other challenges that haven't been addressed. And if we don't tackle them, there will be consequences. And those consequences will be even more serious for our children and our grandchildren. I am the European Commissioner for Environment, Oceans and Fisheries. And I'm here because I want to talk about the future. What kind of future we want and how we can get there. If you are a young person today, crisis is probably a way of life. We are coming out of the worst health crisis in living memory. Perhaps you have lost a relative. If you haven't, most likely you know someone who has. And the medium-term economic effects could be even worse, the largest downturn of anyone's lifetime by far. Now we have the vaccines, and most people want to think about going back to life as before. Stop. That sounds nice but it would be a really bad idea. And I'm not the only one who thinks that. Wherever you look, the evidence of climate crisis is there, from the melting ice in Greenland to the fires in Amazon. The more fossil fuels we burn, the worse it gets. More heat waves and more droughts, more severe weather, bigger hurricanes arriving more often. And it gets worse. There will be no vaccine for climate change, for air pollution, biodiversity loss, or the unsustainable use of resources. The big picture for biodiversity is terrible. The United Nations are talking about the possibility of losing one million species in the next few decades. To put that in perspective, there are only eight million species on the planet. In the last four decades, global wildlife populations fell by 60%. It's a result of human activities. We have lost 60% of farmland birds at EU level. And in Europe, in the space of a few decades, we lost 80% of insect populations in some member states. These aren't abstract numbers. We are talking the living fabric of the planet. Across Europe, the variety of this fabric is astonishing. The more you look into it, the more amazing it becomes. We have scary bears and mighty eagles, pygmy owls and a hundred kilo catfish. We have 2,000 species of bee, deep, dark, primeval forest. But what's just as amazing about our nature is the ongoing decline. Wherever we look, we see our fingerprints, our footprint putting more and more pressure on the world. We are relying on an outdated economic model. It built the world we know, but it's also brought the problems we face. More than 90% of biodiversity loss and water stress come from the extraction of raw materials that feed this model and the processing of materials, fuels and food. It's a linear economy where we extract, we manufacture, we use and then we throw things away. We act as though that was the end of the story. We act as though if we 
burn down one rainforest, we could just plant a new one and it will grow up in a year or two. We cannot. It's a massive social inability to address the consequences of what we do. It's easy to, to joke about environmentalism. I grew up watching South Park and in the words of Eric Cartman, it's all a bunch of tree-hugging hippie crap. And there is still are a economists and policymakers who think in these terms, who think environmentalism is soft-headed economics. That's not my way of thinking. And I'm not naive. Before I went to Brussels, I served as the Lithuanian Minister of Economy. There is a really good case for looking at things from a completely different point of view. If you just accept the traditional way of doing things, you are actually refusing to face reality. Accepting that your actions have consequences and that you are responsible for what you do is the first sign of growing up. It used to be easy to ignore those consequences because they are sometimes hard to see. Waste is a good example. We grew, grew up thinking we can throw things in a bin and that's the end of the story. Or that a magic recycling technology will make it just go away. But that is magical thinking. In 2019, global plastic production was 368 million tons. We recycle less than 10%. That means we have a plastic waste problem of more than 330 million tons every single year. Since the 1950s, the world has made more than 8 billion tons of plastic. And around 80% of all that plastic is still with us. So isn't it a time to really address these problems? What we need is a different kind of economy. It needs to be more coherent, more resilient, more sustainable. That means solutions designed for long term in a socially inclusive manner. And more than anything, it means taking a joint up approach, tackling environmental challenges in a systemic manner with actions that do good on multiple fronts at the same time. There are three key elements. First, you have to go climate neutral because it brings huge benefits for all. Decreasing air pollution means lowering the risk of respiratory diseases and lessening the burden on the health system. That sounds great, but where do we start? Well, first of all, we need to stop funding this harm. Like fossil fuel subsidies, the EU countries spent around 159 billion euros on energy subsidies in 2018. Nearly a third of that went on fossil fuels. That can't continue. We should not subsidize anything that undermines our own foundations. That sounds logical, but it's not a reality yet. It has to be. Second, we need more circular economy. That means keeping resources in circulation for much longer and minimizing waste while making our society more resilient and delivering a healthy environment. If you want to reduce waste and minimize environmental impacts, you have to start with design. Up to 80% of the impact of product are already determined at the design phase. When we tackle this problem, we have to do it from the very beginning. It's the most effective strategy. And then thirdly, you have to stop biodiversity loss. Biodiversity and healthy ecosystems are the most effective weapons to fight climate change. Last year, the EU adopted a plan to put Europe's biodiversity on the path to recovery by 2030. It includes two very ambitious numbers. First, transforming at least 30% of Europe's lands and seas into effectively managed protected areas. And second, one third of these protected areas, so 10% of EU land and 10% of EU seas, should also be strictly protected. In the EU, we are doing all these things through the European Green Deal. It's a vision for a better future built around a really simple idea, a fundamental principle that should be burned 
into the walls of boardrooms and bedrooms and parliaments all around the world. Do no harm. Make sure that the consequences of your action, your spending, your behavior don't have a negative effect on the world around you. That is our approach. Not just accepting consequences, but anticipating them and acting to prevent that harm before it happens. I want to leave you with one final thought. All around the world, enormous stimulus packages are being used to kickstart the economy. It's a truly historic moment. Europe has a 750 billion euro recovery plan. Other countries have their own recovery plans and funds too. These are massive investments. Our livelihood, our well-being will depend on how this money gets spent. Will it go on sustainable investments? Will it foster a green and digital transition? More circular economy? A smooth exit from fossil fuels? Or it's going to be a failed investment? It's up to all of us to make sure it is not. Now let me get back to Vincentis, a four years old European who is helping shape the policy of the European Union without knowing or understanding it. He is just one of millions of children who do not deserve to live in a world of forest fires, floods and climate migration. Why should they suffer the consequences of inaction from their parents or grandparents? I got into politics because I believe in change. I believe in the power of people to shape their future, to set goals and reach them. But to do this, you need to stand up. The real enemy we have to face is indifference. We all know how awful it is to be accused of forgetting to do something you promised. I do find myself in that position now once in a while. I know how hard it is to defend yourself against a disappointed four-year-old. There are people who still think that climate change is hippie crap. But imagine standing in front of all the generations to come, and that's a lot of kids, and trying to explain why you didn't do enough when the earth was becoming uninhabitable. I don't want to be in that position. Do you? <laughs>